talk, go on camping. It is going to be epic. Yeehaw. This is Chris one, Barney a zero. That'll never oh, make the cut, right? <laughs> Darren's setting little booby traps. And I might need to use this later. <laughs> We are rolling into Emmamore. Oh, I am yeah. excited. It's another snake. Creek crossings make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I love this place. Yes, 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 yes. We are fully stocked for good on ahead. All right, guys, let's get to camp. Stay tuned. Today we are starting at the big car track based in Landsborough, which is only a quick drive up the Bruce Highway. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Good. Can you go Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Nice and dry day for it. When it's wet, if you keep on going flat stick, there's no way to stay on the track. Yeah. So the trick now is to get around the track without coming off the track. That's when you're a good driver. So who's going to win? Yeah. Yeah. I am the best cheat ever. I've got my money on me. Let's go to the bank. Let's go, boys. Oh, yeah. With all this unexpected rain, it looks like the boys are now ready for some mayhem. I am so pumped for this, eh? I've got eyes on the prize. More seatbelts. Give me two more seatbelts. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> I can tell you at 70 kilometers an hour on the 1.2 kilometer track, it is much harder in the wet. Just going around there and skidding and yeah. hitting the brake a bit and just. <laughs> that was. Sick. Oh, I saw a shoot cut pass away. Who's ripped? Well, look at me. I'm in the set. What was it like for you driving such a large car? Yeah. I just tried to stay on the track. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was behind Barney at one stage going into that bottom corner and I, that's it. I had to shut my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so not quite as nimble as the Jimny, but a bit more room for storage than the Jimny. Uh, a bit more power. A bit more power. I've got, I've got bigger tyres though. Funny seeing Chris facing me when I was winning, um, but you know, I do. So who actually won? Uh, it was, definitely wasn't Barney. I think today's winner was Mother Nature. Way to start the morning, a bit wet, but a uh, bit of fun on the go karts, eh? In the rain, that was totally different. I think the best part was when we all got into a bit of a group there to get some drone shots, and then Barney ran me off the track. What do you have to say to that, Barney? Mate, you're just in the way, you're going a little bit slow, and I couldn't help myself. I really just can't help myself. I'll tell you what, I couldn't stop laughing that whole time, that was so much fun. 
Yeah, I didn't actually think we'd actually get out on the track, and then when he said, no, you can go, oh, mate, I just was smiling. Yeah, so I think the big difference in the wet is the drifting. Like, you can really drift it, but you got to drift it slow, and that's... All of a sudden, you get a, a grippy spot, and boom, you're off the track. So that's the tricky bit. <laughs> so what's the plan next after the, the go-karts? Where are we off to? Mate, we've hooked up a bit of a, a lunch and a few frothies over at the UMH Breweries. And then uh, we're off to Double Island. Barney, mate, perfect place to stop before we get on that uh, barge over to Double Island. Mm. These are good beers. These are very good beers. Now, guys, we come to the Your Mates Brewery. Brent? Dude, Ten. I love Cheers a lot of these. These oh, are unbelievable. Mate. I got one burning question for you. <laughs> Where do the name of these come from? <laughs> like, what do you got? You got Larry, you got Donnie, 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 you got Eddie, Eddie, Sally, Macca, Macca, oh, Macca. who's our fishing buddy. Yeah. And um, we got Tilly just recently, and she loves the uh, all the festivals. You guys are like everywhere in Brisbane. Yeah, we got we got everywhere. We got um out out Australia wide too now, Dan Murphy's, which is awesome. Food is just sensation the boys are full well, honestly totally compliments stuffed. to the chef for sure <laughs> um my car is over gvm that's purely based on the brisket burger that i had <laughs> so i mean just again the story where'd you guys all start yeah well um the boys Kristen and, and matt who founded the business um they used to work a little bar down at caloundra and um Kristen was a teacher prior to that and matt a project manager and uh and then it's evolved into something great like this that we can share with um, all of australia Mate, I, I tried homebrew once. It's not easy to make a beer. So what's your opening hours? Uh, Tuesday to Sunday, 10 yep. or 11 a.m. till uh, 11 p.m. Yep. We've got the kids' playground over there. Um, get 160 people in here, good times. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> great times. Yeah. No, great. I think, let's grab a few cartons, um, have 30? a quick look around this brewery, 30? and uh, I reckon we need to head out to the beach, set up camp. All right. Let's do it. All right, boys, thanks very much for dropping in. Dude, that oh, is. Thanks very much for having us. Great place. Once lunch is over, the boys made sure to grab a couple of cartons of the Larry's. I've got a date with Tilly. Don't tell my wife. Macca, Larry and Tilly all walked into a campsite. No one came out. They all got demolished. <laughs> Now we are off to the Tawantan Ferry. We're going to head up to DI. Keener's Mustard, set up camp, chill out for the RV. It's going to be good. Stay tuned. A good trick to note, folks the Noosa North Shore Ferry is $10 per car under 5.5 metres and is cash only. We just crossed the Noosa River, heading to North Shore, going camping. It is going to be epic. Yeah. Robbie's decided to drive and that means we've gotten bogged already. Five minutes on the sand. Thanks, Robbie. Okay, so I know most of you got up the beach already, but we've had to call everyone back because the caravan, HQ caravan, got stuck and Barney came to pull them out, but now Barney has got himself stuck. What we're not seeing on camera is the Jimny was about to pull Barney out. Darren thought he would come and help me with the Jimny. That ain't gonna work, so I've just kicked him off the team. Chris is here to get rid of me. But as soon as the camera crew came, Barney does not want a 1.5 litre Jimny pulling him out of the sand. So he's called Chris and <laughs> his V8 to come and pull him out. Cause that looks much better on camera than the little Jimny pulling him out. There's no truth to that. It was always gonna be the patrol recovering Barney. This is Chris one, Barney a zero. It may actually look like we're bogged axle deep, uh, both with the car and the caravan. That's what it looks like. That's what it's going to look like to a lot of people. But the truth is we've heard uh, Barney and Chris both talking up the uh, recovery technique. So what we've done is we've deliberately planted ourselves here. 
um, just to give the boys the opportunity to show us how everything works. That's a really heavy caravan, really soft sand here. So we'll just do a double car recovery. two land cruisers oh, and they geez. just slow down the patrol because yeah, like honestly yeah. done <laughs> yeah right, i'll give you that one that was good can you just repeat that barney was that all me did i get that was that patrol one <laughs> yeah oh, i'll give that to you i'll give that to you <laughs> yeah definitely patrol one land cruiser zero <laughs> Let's not take anything away from Chris, but full disclosure, we were setting up for a scene and a couple of us might have just forgotten to air down properly. Where are you going, boys? Looks like you're going not far. Mate, we did set at a double recovery. I was bogged, the Jimny was bogged, the Hyatt was bogged, the Nissan was bogged, but I pulled the Nissan forward with your snatch. Wow. Glad to be here. How can I be of assistance? Mate, you just be ready for the next recovery. And let's just get the care. <laughs> Good to have you back, buddy. Uh, Let's do it. I'm just going to go down the back. So if I remember last time, I used up a load of diesel. That'll never make the that'll never make the cut, right? <laughs> well, Barney, back on the beach. It seems like only a year ago we we're on the beach. Mate, we, um, I think most of our trips this year have been focusing on getting somewhere, but I'll tell you what, the beach is where I love to be the most. Yeah, looking forward to getting to camp. Great convoy. Um, the weather's not too bad. I mean, it's looking like it wants to rain, but so far the weather's pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, this convoy is pretty epic. Yeah, we got the boys at 200 from Caravan HQ. How are you fellas going? We're going good. We, um, we're very impressed with your recovery skills too after our effort of uh, burying ourselves 30 metres in. That was good. Thank you all. <laughs> well, we got Jacob back there from Airbag, mate. How you been? I have been sensational. I was literally just on the beach on the weekend and there was a lot of rain, but it was beautiful conditions to say the least. Little Reek, uh, good to see you along in the beautiful chimney. I'm so excited to be here. It could be a snowstorm right now and there's no place I'd rather be. So, yeah, thanks for having me along. Absolutely pumped to be here. So excited. Yeah, mate. Well, the good thing is because you're nice and compact, you'll be able to, like, you know, just jump on the back of Chris's vehicle or the back of my unit if you wanted to, if you get stuck. Well, look, the first thing uh, you should know is that chimneys don't get stuck. Um, but secondly, it's oh, not a bad idea. Saves me a bit of fuel. I'm happy to hitch a ride up on the back of the Y62. No worries at all. <laughs> uh, hey Sam, how are you, mate? How's your first trip with the boys? Uh, I'm loving it so far. Really appreciate you guys. Looking forward to some uh, good times here, and then out at Avonmore, of course. Yeah, mate. Well, thanks for coming out to Avonmore. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good night of camp and any beach drive on the Y62. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a pretty good night of camp and any beach drive. I'm absolutely thrilled to have windows down, have a lot of fun. Uh, but camp, mate, how far up are we camping? Yeah, I think um, I've not camped um, here, so I've decided let's go zone two. We can uh, get a caravan in there. Let's get to camp, let's get set up and uh, maybe crack the top of a coldy, eh? Yeah, mate, lucky we're into that brewery. Now we are fully stocked for a good night ahead. All right, guys, let's get to camp. It's late, beer is still cold, that's the most important. So, let's get it done. Hurry up, Chris. I'm hurrying. <sighs> a little bit of sand in there, so we should be good to go. Down to the beach, your mate's beer in hand. Uh, we'll set up, cook some food, and get ready to do it all again tomorrow. We've just pulled into camp, it's dark. 
Uh, it's not raining though, which is a bonus, so hopefully we've got a bit of time to set up camp and get ourselves organised, get some dinner cooked and um, pray it doesn't rain too much overnight, but I think uh, we should be okay, fingers crossed. We've just pulled up to camp, I've levelled out the 200, I've got the swags out, I'm going to set those up and then I'm going to chill for the night with the lads, it's going to be epic. It's like an ice challenge. There we go. Sue's the arthritis. <laughs> TUR Beach Camping is truly an amazing place. One point to note is you must bring a portable toilet. Lucky for us, we had the Royal Flair. All these boys are still setting up their swags. We come in, push a button. Look at that, all done. <laughs> What's going on? Is, is Darren setting little booby traps? So he's over there and I see him and he's running a little sneaky little guy rope over to the car so that when I walk around the corner, he's, I'm gonna fall straight over. He shouldn't have parked this close to me though, should he? And I might need to use this later. <laughs> It's not for chopping firewood. Yeah. Good morning, mate. How morning. are you? Good, mate. How would you sleep? Yeah, pretty good. Beautiful temperature. It's nice and warm. And got up and had a swim. Yeah, no, very good. Ready for a big day. All right, so we've got a hungry crew, of course. Now, we just got up. Big day yesterday, late at camp. So, quick feed, bacon egg wraps. It's the stable. It's also the best. So, you can't beat it. And... Here they come, so I think it's time to get it ready. Yes. Well, Chris, what do you think of that, mate? What a camp, what a night, a lot of fun. Yeah, mate, that was a good little spot. Perfect night, I think. Um, and the weather's been pretty good to us. So I reckon what we do is we head up here, cut through, go to Rainbow Beach, maybe grab a bite to eat just before we get past the rocks and uh, head to Emmerball. What do you say? I've got a great place to camp last night. Got tucked in behind the dunes. I loved it. Can't wait to get into the next camp. I think the weather has truly turned on. It is immaculate. Good night camp, a lot of fun, but a little bit wet. So, uh, don't know how it's gonna go at Ammermoor, but I'm really looking forward to it. So, let's get to the top and let's get going, eh? And uh, have a lot of fun. Alright, so we've just pulled up right at the exit for Rainbow Beach. Had an absolutely fantastic day touring around double iron with the boys, but we're all getting a little bit hungry. So before we leave, we figured we cook them a nice chicken burger. Really easy setup. Let's grab the gear and get going. Oh, I heard those gourmet lamb burgers coming. What do you reckon? Well, judging by that caravan, I think we are going to be treated to truffle flavoured chips. Um, and uh, I'm thinking maybe a rib fillet or a rib eye. Um, yeah. <laughs> truffle flavoured chips. I, he I hear what you're saying, maybe luxury, but I think they might have hidden a wood fired pizza oven in there. I'm thinking wood fired pizzas, boys. Ooh, yeah. Oh. Wood fired pizza, nah, mate. I saw the pan go in. Salt, uh, salt okay. and pepper calamari. Yeah. Maybe I'm dreaming. You don't have a caravan with a kitchen like that without cooking up a massive dish of lasagna for everybody. So I'm pretty confident there's lasagna coming. 
We got chicken burgers, we got snacks, a bit of pasta salad. Rainbow Beach Township, there is one of the best underbody car washes. Treat your four wheel drive to it, it's very good. Yeah, well, buddy, what do you think? You, uh, what a day, eh? Yeah, I tell you what, absolute cracker of a day. I got, all, I absolutely love Rainbow Beach, and now off to Evermore, somewhere I've never been and only heard good things about. Well, right, by judging from the scenery, it is very green. To make things green, I think it's been a lot of rain. Yeah, this is beautiful country out here. Stepping into it just gets me so pumped for what's to come tomorrow. I've really been looking forward to this part. Uh, Evermore, from what I've heard, is pretty challenging at the best of the times, let alone after all this rain, so cannot wait to see what's ahead. Yeah, this is where farming country meets rugged country. Just love it. There's some pretty steep hill climbs out here too, by the way. What a great day. We've seen everything. We started in the sand with the surf and the sun, and now we're driving through uh, gravel back roads with nice green surrounds. It's, it's amazing. Not going to lie, creek crossings make me nervous. Well. It's been a bit of rain. We, we, a we, bit. We dodged a storm yeah, a coming rain. here, but look at this. Mate, Good. flowing water, it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to see what the track's like. If the camp's a little bit dry, but if it's not raining, I'll be absolutely happy. Absolutely. Good thing it is a market because we know it's 300 mil high, so we know we're safe. And so we're sending you first. Time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'll be safe. With the river crossings, guys, it's really, really important that number one, you know your depth. Look, if you've got markers, you can cross that. Don't cross something that's too tall, too far, so just check it. Here we go. Yeah. Easy. Now your brakes can be a problem when they're wet, so let them dry out a little bit, but do not expect them to work um, straight away, and don't you know, don't push it. So when you hit a brake crossing, just test your brakes a little bit, make sure they're warmed up, because that's what's going to stop you later on. That's what's important is uh, safety. Crossings and safety after crossings often forgotten. So quick couple of tips. See you guys at camp. We are rolling, folks. We are rolling. We are rolling into Emmamore. And I'm, I am excited! Hey Barney, I'm really surprised. There seems to be a lot of tracks just on this road into the camp. So there's a lot of tracks off to the side that look like a lot of fun. I don't know how the little rig's gonna go, but I saw some off but muddy stuff. Should be right. Yeah, look, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, short wheelbase life can be hairy at times, but always up for a challenge and very, very excited. A big heavy airbag man suspended 200 series is out for an appearance again. Can't wait to see that on some tougher tracks. Yeah, boy, I'm keen to um, test out the experience I've gained with you lads over the past year. So if there's any hill climbs, I'm sure I'll be able to tackle it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Why well, haven't I ever been here? Is that another snake? Another snake, guys. Just watch out for that one curled up. <laughs> I love this place! <laughs> Ammonwall State Forest is located 180 kilometers north of Brisbane and 20 kilometers southwest of Gympie. There are two camping areas and one day use area. Today, we're camped at the Ammonwall Creek Camping Area. 
There's a grassy camping zone and open fires are welcome as long as there are no fire bans. Bookings are essential, so make sure you jump online. It's also a good thing to note is, is home to the Gimpy Muster. Okay guys, here we are at Amamore, and yeah, it's my turn to cook tonight, so big crowd. So I've got the 12 quart camp oven, I've got a nice little one here, and we're doing tikka masala. It's one of my favourites on a fire, let's get amongst it. I'm going to get this little chimney here going, I'm going to get a flat pack fire pit out, get some lump coal into it, fire it up, and that's how we're going to get that nice smoky flavour through the tikka masala when we get it into that camp oven. This is combustible or in the outside. Load that lump coal into there. So load all this lump coal in there. That'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to really get going. And that gives me time to get the fire pit set up and of course start to prep all the food. Good thing about these little portable fire pits is you've got a base to put it on which provides a bit more sort of stability. You've got a couple of these rest your pot on. Okay, and the whole idea of these is to rest over this lip so they lock on and then sit in place and you can confidently put a nice big pot on there and it's not going to fall over in your fire. So now it's really all about prep time. I'm cooking for a lot of people so I've got, a, I've got two cutting boards, one to cut the chicken up on and the other one's really just to cut up all the other pieces of all the other ingredients like your onions, tomatoes etc etc. Pre-oiled and ready to go. So you've got a little camp oven here, this is just a little nine quart. And of course, this is what the rice is going to go in. Okay, so Jukes is gonna cook us up a magnificent feed of chicken tikka masala for dinner, which I'm really looking forward to. But as you can see, the sun is starting to go down, so we need a bit more light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna light up this gazebo with one of our LED camp light kits. It's got the orange setting, because there's one thing that you want, and there's one thing you don't want when you're at camp. What you want is lots of light. What you don't want is lots of bugs, and that's where the orange light helps. Let's do it. Flick it on, we have light, hit the mode button, and we have orange light. Okay. I'm wired for light. You that's are indeed, light, my friend. You're welcome. All right, I'm getting Looking forward things. to that meal. Righto, the coals are blazing away over there. It's time to get the ingredients ready. Now, I can't do this all on my own without my trusty sidekick. And uh, Daz, would you mind? I need a little bit of a hand over here, mate. Oh, and yeah. hey. 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 Oh, wow. all right. Okay. So I'm going to start cutting up the chicken thighs. Now, I use chicken thighs because they're a little bit fattier than uh, the chicken breast and it doesn't dry out as much. Daz, yep. can I get you to get that knife and start cutting up uh, bits of garlic and, of course, yep. the onions? Of course. So, because I've got a big crew here, yeah, I've got about three and a half kilos of chicken. We're going to run three onions, probably about seven or eight cloves of garlic. On every camping trip, I always take some paste with me. So the tikka masala paste, you can get it from pretty much any supermarket. Whoa, 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 whoa! Mate, that's why it's cooking with chaos. Um, have you got something smaller? No, I think uh, this will do the trick, mate. That what you want when you're camping is a knife that can do everything. Uh, so... All right, all right, all right. He's mad about his knives. We can just keep it down. Going to throw a heap of sugar in because that is one of the secret ingredients, along with, of course, you've got to have ginger. We'll just have a squeeze of that, throw it all in, camp oven, 
once we get a bit of heat into it. And that's what we'll do now. I'm just going to one up you in the glove stakes. Oh, that's just <laughs> because of the knife. While these last ingredients are being prepped, I'm going to go and get the paste and start putting that in and really starting to, uh, to boil it off. Curry paste into the pot. Make sure you get all of it. That starts to really get aromatic. You want it to smell really nice. That's when you know it's starting to burn off and all the oil that's in the paste is primed and ready to go and add your garlic and your onion. <laughs> They're ready. They're ready. They're ready? Wait. So I, I don't know if it's sweat or tears. So one of the things I will say is just make sure that you keep an eye on this because you don't want to burn the paste. You'll get that burnt flavor through it and you want a smoky flavor off the fire, not a burnt flavor. So if you see it getting a little bit dry, you can add a little bit of water up to about 50 mils. That should do the trick. Beautiful, look at that. It's time for a couple of the last ingredients before we throw the chicken in. So that ginger that I talked about, a nice healthy couple of dollops of ginger. Don't overdo it because not everyone likes that ginger flavor, really strong. And then it's time to start getting your three tins of diced tomatoes. Now these really add a nice dimension to it. A little bit of acidity because tomatoes just have that tendency to balance something that's, you know, typically can be a, uh, pretty strong in a curry. So go easy on this stuff because it really depends on how much you're cooking for. So I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons, really get that going. So we can always add more sugar later on, but what it does do is it really gets some depth into that curry. I don't know how else to explain it. It really gives depth and dimension to the flavor. Dump it all in there, don't be shy. Stir it all in, thanks Darren. Feeding for the masses here. So the idea is to get that chicken cooked off amongst that curry as fast as you can. Hey boys, you hungry or what? Give me about 25 minutes. I'll give you 26. You're on. <laughs> so it's as simple as putting the lid on now. We'll give that about 25 minutes. Uh, but mate, before you go, can you take off and uh, wash up? <laughs> okay, so rice advice. One cup of rice to every one and a half cups of water. So I'm going to put that in a big pot here. And of course I've got a gas cooker here, it just makes it a hell of a lot easier. I don't need smoky flavoured rice. So I'm going to throw that on there and it'll take about 25 minutes and we're ready to go. I'm just going to go with two. I'm going to go with two. That's heaps of rice. So with rice, as you start to see it come to the boil, just make sure you give it a stir every now and again to stop it from sticking to the bottom. Here we go. Lid off. Oh, look at that. Looks mint. Smells good. I'll get that into you. We'll get it off the fire. We'll stop it from boiling. Let it cool down just a touch. Give it a couple of minutes and then we'll put two big tubs of this cream in there. And that's double cream and then it's gonna be perfect. And a little trick with the naan bread, put it straight on the cooktop. Just keep an eye on it, but that is gonna be, oh, absolutely mint. That one's, boom, ready to go. And as you can see, it's a little bit burnt, which adds to that campfire smoky flavor. And this one, I might just forget about it for a little while. Let it burn, because it can be Chris's. He's been hassling me all night about how long it's gonna to take to get ready. Hey boys, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Grubs up, let's go, chop chop. Dude, wow, that is unbelievable. That is it's amazing, oh. bro. honestly. It tastes better when I don't have to make it. Oh, that's the whole idea. Campfire cooking, can't beat it.